What is going on survivors? Manic Guitar here with another installment of Arc Tutorial Evolved. Today what we will be doing is nothing short of again amazing. I love doing this stuff, it's a lot of fun, but I have some news for you guys. I have some big news actually. And I also plan on doing a little bit with my brass monkey on my shoulder here. Today we're going to get into a new segment of archaeology. I've been working about, uh, I want to say a week on the research. It takes a little bit of time to get this stuff down because I am researching real life animals. I want to make sure my sources are good. But guys, here we go without further delay. Let's jump into this. And I forgot the button. There we go. Punch. And okay, here we go. I've been working on a little bit of a house for myself just for fun. Just because I had nothing better to do. But let's get back uh, again. A lot of stuff is happening in the base. Uh, SPC Red Irish is currently, I believe, in Ireland. So he is not here working on anything. But let's go find ourselves a Stegosaurus. A couple things about the Stegosaurus. Best kibble, but I don't have it unfortunately, would be... Sarco egg kibble. Sarco egg kibble requires one sarco egg, one rock carrot, one cooked meat jerky, two miho berries, three fiber, and of course water. That is the recipe for sarco eggs. Sarco egg kibble, excuse me. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any sarcos tamed or any eggs available, so I am going to be doing things kind of the old-fashioned way, going with um, vegetables. Vegetables is going to be your next best thing to use for taming the stegosaurus, followed by miho berries and finally regular berries um, on top of that you're going to have to make sure that you unlock your saddle saddle is unlocked at about level 30 so once you unlock that and build that you're pretty much set to go but there are some dangers of course when facing them so be prepared when you head in you're not going to want to get them too soon because they will do some damage to you now those dangers being knockback Stegosaurus's tail can knock you back pretty dang far, so you have to be careful, especially on the center here, you have all kinds of cliffs, and that Brano is still chilling in that rock. That's been over a week since you've been hanging up there, buddy. What are you doing? I'm just a Bronto. I'm chilling in the rock. I don't know what the hell he's doing, guys. He's been here for quite some time, since our Parasaur Lapis video, and I, I, I don't know what to make of this. I think he's just living in a rock. <laughs> but yes, the Stegosaurus can knock you off of cliffs, especially on the center because there are cliffs everywhere, so it's something to worry about. And there we go, Stegosaurus, right where we caught our Parasaur Lapis. And we're going to actually bring you with us because I believe we have Dino Carry on. Come on, buddy. You're coming with me. I have no idea what level you are or anything. I'm not exactly going to check it out, so let's get him back to base. We are going to drop him very close to base, and then we will start taming this guy. I'm gonna miss you, Brano. You're a good, good Brano. I'm just chilling in that rock. Yay! <laughs> anyway, let's get on with the news, guys. Anyway, guys, news for me. Um, I live in Buffalo, New York currently. I am moving within 10 or 11 days to Los Angeles, California. So I'm gonna be taking a little bit of a break from doing videos for a minute, at least gaming videos. I have other ideas for videos, um, especially with doing the, I'm doing a road trip. I'm driving cross country with either my sister or my dad, whoever chooses to go. Um, they're gonna fly back, but I plan on seeing Yellowstone, Yosemite, Mount Rushmore, a couple different caves, Jewel Cave, Wind Cave, the second, I think it's the second and third largest caves in the world. Um, gonna be checking those out, uh, and of course, since we're going to be in the area, Devil's Tower, I mean like Close Encounters of the Third Kind, can't go wrong with that guys, it's classic, classic movie, of course I'm probably going to throw a clip in here of that. Okay, Stegosaurus, back at the base, here we go, we're going to get you guys down here, drop you off, and then land, and we should probably find out what, why aren't you landing, yeah. There we go. Probably find out what level this guy is, because I don't want to take on something that's going to be way too high level. Level 100 female. I think we can do this. Just don't get too close to me, buddy. Run, Forrest, run. Like I said, knockback, guys. So you got to always watch out for that. Always watch out for that knockback. Hopefully we get enough of these darts in her to knock her out quick, because I don't want to get knocked back again, and I really don't feel like dealing- oh, damn. She's angry! She's really angry. Come on, reload, reload. Reload, reload. 
I'm glad I have the monkey, because the monkey species throwing is slowing this thing down quite a bit. Really? I really thought that would have worked. I guess not. So guys, bolas do not work on Stegosaurus. Okay, now we're good. She's running away. She's going to be down any second. Get out of my way, Quetzal. Come on, fall. Fall, baby, fall. Don't fall off the cliff, though. No! <laughs> Get back here. Oh my god, that was so close. Look how close we were to losing that Stego. <laughs> we got lucky there, guys. Now, let's pump it in full of some veggies. Because that is our primary source of taming for this girl. Throw in our narcotics. I'm not worried about them. And now we're going to sit here and wait for quite some time. This will take a while, guys. Okay, guys. It's time for another segment of archaeology. So I hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> Alright survivors, time for another episode of Archaeology. Of course today we will be covering the Stegosaurus of which this entire episode has been building up to. Now this dinosaur is first collected and described in a period known as the Bone Wars which was referring to a fossil collection race between a multitude of paleontologists. One of which being Othniel Charles Marsh who was born October 29th, 1831 in Lockport, New York on a farm. I thought that was kind of cool because that's only 50 minutes from where I currently reside. Um, so it's kind of nice seeing somebody so local being such a well-known paleontologist. Kind of interesting for me. Anyway, in 1877, north of Morrison, Colorado, he named his first Stegosaurus fossil, Stegosaurus armatus. Initially, he believed it to be an aquatic animal which led to its name Stegosaurus, which means roofed lizard. Thinking that the plates originally laid flat on the back, and would be stacked such as shingles. Anyway, that's very different from what we have seen in game and in media and uh, what we know today in the fossil records. In 1879, he did find another fossil which he named Stegosaurus ungulatus. And in 1870, sorry, 1887, he found three more species, Stenops, Duplex, and Sulcatops. Now, the Stegosaurus lived during the late Jurassic period, roughly 150.8 to 155.7 million years ago, primarily in Western North America. One of the more recognizable species due to those plates on its back, which have led it to be used uh, in media, such as Jurassic Park. The second and third Jurassic Park movies to be precise, as well as King Kong. Now, where the tail comes into play with this animal, the spikes do actually have a name. They are called Thagomizers, which got its name from the media, to be honest, used in a newspaper cartoon from the Far Side Comics in 1982, and the scientists just kind of adopted it from there. So it's kind of cool to see that um, the media has some influence on science. Now let's get into the brain of the animal. It has one of the smallest brain to body ratios among dinosaurs thinking that the brain is about the size and shape of a bent hot dog. That is through Kenneth Carpenter, director of the USU Eastern Prehistoric Museum in Utah. Now the size of this animal, roughly the largest of them being the Stegosaurus armatus, grew up to 30 feet or 9 meters long. Best known and most studied of the species, nearly a full complete skeleton has been discovered of that dino. Kind of cool, right? Anyway, let's get into the plates. The plates form in two rows, pointy side up, neck to tail, and about 17 plates in what is called scoots. I hope I can say that correctly too. Now the bony material called osteoderms is not solid, lattice structure with blood vessels throughout them, so it is kind of unknown exactly what they're for, but one possible theory is thermoregulation, kind of cooling off the body. That is due to the blood vessels within the plates themselves, yet some theorize that the structure of the plates couldn't be used to dissipate heat because of the material they are made out of. However, in 2010, the Swiss Journal of Geosciences concluded the plates played a passive role in heat regulation, but it was not their primary function. Theorized to be primarily used for display purposes such as species recognition and attraction of mates. 
Now the spikes on the end of the tail kind of finish off those plates. We did get into where that name came from, Fagomizer, coined in 1982 from a Far Side cartoon. Scientists did adopt the term and it was believed they were used primarily for defense against predators. The evidence of this being that 10% of all Fagomizers are found broken at the tip. Most Allosaur fossils, the main predator of the Stegosaurus during that period, have puncture wounds from Thagomizers in their fossil records. Now, that's awesome to see because we see that being used in game and in any type of media that we have seen up until this point. Now, the skull was very pointed and very narrow, had a head down posture due to its short forelimbs compared to the larger hind legs. The difference in the legs uh, length suggests that the dino couldn't move very fast and that the hind legs, excuse me, would overtake the forelimbs meaning that it's not going to be able to move very fast, which we see that again in game. It's not the most agile nor the most huh, turn radius friendly of dinosaurs. Okay guys, let's make it interesting. I'm going to get another one, a male, so we'll have a male and a female that we're taming. Get ourselves some egg boosting. Now the diet, of course it is an herbivore, the toothless beak and its very small teeth were great for grinding up food. The jaw, however, was not flexible, so unlike other types of dinos, the beak dinosaurs such as Stegosaurus, Triceratops, and other Hadrosaurids, Stego did not have strong jaws or grinding teeth, so it would chop up and down slowly. However, the jaw only went up and down with peg-like teeth to grind up that stuff, but there were cheeks in the dino's mouth, so it was able to store food. Now, due to the short neck and small head, it most likely ate low-lying brushes and shrubs such as ferns, mosses, fruits, conifers, horsetails, and fallen fruit. Now, in 2010, the study in the Swiss Journal of Geosciences, scientists modeled the teeth of the jaw for study, and research showed that the bite was actually weaker than a human's bite, and thus the dino could only break down small twigs and branches less than half an inch in diameter. So, this guy was definitely an herbivore, but could not do very much in terms of breaking down food, so it would eat softer, more pliable materials such as ferns and that kind of stuff. But guys, that is what I have on our Stegosaurus. I hope you stick around. We got some really cool stuff coming up, of which SBC Red Irish comes back and we get into a multiple tame. Alright survivors, we are just about done with our second stego tame of the day. This is our female wild stego level 100. I believe we probably have one more fight in this girl. But guys, I hope you did enjoy this video. I hope you enjoyed the information. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure to hit that like button. Comment in the comments below. I love hearing the feedback. Knowing what you guys think of what I'm doing, whether good or bad. Doesn't matter. Criticism is criticism. I prefer constructive criticism. So let's keep it positive, guys. Now, of course, we are going to to continue on with our art eology series because I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's kind of cool bringing the real life dino information to you guys because it's not something that most people know or want to take the time to look up. Now, there goes our stego. She is done. We are going to name her Ungalatus, which is named after a real life stegosaurus, as we have already covered. If I can spell it correctly, that is. So, Ungalatus here is our female stego, level 145. Tamed out pretty decent, we got ourselves our Mastercraft stego saddle. Put it on her, and pretty much she is ready to go and she came really close to running off that cliff. So we're gonna back her up, go a little beep, 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 and because of the turn radius, I have to take my time with this. I don't want her falling off. Now we have Ungulatus and Stenops for our stegosauruses. That is going to give us a mate boost and a better chance for getting eggs, which is exactly why I wanted to get these Stegosauruses, was for the eggs, and eggs are good for everything. So it all depends on what you need that kibble for. But guys, thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the content. I will keep on keeping on with these videos, these archaeology segments especially. And as more dinos release, I will continue to do this. Now guys, follow my Twitter for information on voting for the next dinos in the series. Because I do want to make sure you guys have a chance to get your opinion out there. What you want to see, what you want to do. So, let's go park her and figure out what we're going to do for our next video. But again, I will be taking a little bit of a break due to traveling. Traveling does take some time, so I'm going to be taking a little bit of time to travel and see the world. Or at least 
from the majority of the United States that I have never seen before. Now, once we get her parts, I'm going to go over a few other things because she is good for a couple things. Mainly getting batch, I believe, let me see here. Getting utility, very good at gathering berries, decent at gathering thatch, not very good at wood, but it is also very good early in-game tank because she does do quite a bit of not bad damage. So, let's go park her next to Stenops over here and we will have ourselves a mate boosted pair. In fact, I can get myself some stamina because stamina is very important. There we go, you see the little heart above Stenops over here? That means we are mate boosted. So now we're going to get eggs all day every day. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, that like button. Follow myself and SPC Red Irish here on our antics through ARC. He is working on some new stuff here. So, sneak preview. Guys, catch you later. Manicots are out. Peace.